one of the things I like about our walk with God is that though Paul talks about running a race because in his day that was the way that a lot of people saw their lives was that they were running a race kind of like some people today you know they run marathons you know and they they get all worked up and trained and excited and they look forward to that time to run that 5k or that 10k you know marathon and they get together with a whole bunch of other people and they know that maybe they won't be number one, but they have fun because there's this kind of group feeling of everyone running the race. Everyone's running this marathon. and That's kind of what Christianity is about. But there's more to it than that. It's not just running the race like Paul said, but it's also walking the walk and living the talk. Because one of the things that God said to the children of Israel when they were wandering in the desert was that they could not go any faster and go any farther than the weakest among them could walk. So what they did was that there were about probably six million Jews wandering in the wilderness and uh, <laughs> by the time they got done there weren't that many. <laughs> but they would only go so far before they would stop and then pitch their tents and camp out, you know, next to water and places for their herds and a place to set up camp, you know, and to be spared the heat of the day. Because sometimes life does come that way. It comes very hard and very fast into your your life of faith. And sometimes you can run with it, you know, and you can run like the marathoners, you know, and you can be in there with the pack, you know, just going and going and going, you know, and praise the Lord, that's fun, you know. It's exciting. You know, there's a time and a place for that. But there's also in our lives the realization that this is a long distance walk. It's a walk every day with the Lord and a marathon that we're going through. That if you can't run with the pack out front, you can walk with the herd in the back, so to speak. Is that the animals could only go so fast, the elderly could only go so fast, those that were maimed or handicapped in some way, as they like to say, physically challenged, mentally challenged, or emotionally challenged, you know, whatever you want to call it nowadays. But the point is, is that you can only go so fast. So God cared enough to tell Moses to tell the people, we're only going this fast. We're only going this quick. And God watched that to see that everyone was taken care of. You know, a lot of times we do that and we forget because sometimes we just shoot off our mouth like a marathon. You know, we just have these, you know, shoot off everything we're thinking in our head without thinking about what our words are doing or considering how we might affect people. I know for myself in ministry, I have to be very careful about what I write, what I say, and what I mean because if I'm not, then even one bad posting or one bad video or one bad word at some point in time kind of blows people out of the water. You know, they they, they go, oh, well, you know, I trusted him, but now, you know, I, I, I don't know who that person is anymore. You know, they overreact, of course, and they don't give credit to God being the one who speaks and that, you know, the instrument he uses is very fallible, meaning me. So a lot of times I find that, you know, I have to, be mindful of God in using the words that I speak and the thoughts that I have that I might be pleasing in His sight. Because the scripture says that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord. And so most of the time, you know, I feel very confident about that. But there are times where things aggravate me and like you, you know, I react to them. I think that's not right. You know, there's there should be something done about that, you know, and you, you kind of want to do something about that. But if I can give you a word, you know, is that before you speak or before you act, before you do, and before you get involved in something, pray about it. You know, pray in the sense of this, expecting God to say yes or no or stopping you from doing something. In other words, ask God to make it very, very obvious that he does not want you involved in that. Because even in the elections that have just recently you know, come up in, in so many political arenas every four years, you always get this whole big herd mentality of everybody running 
for their favorite candidate, you know, and they start stomping on each other. They start tripping over each other. They start, you know, ignoring some of the things that God is saying, you know, and warning of to not be so involved in political things that you forget the kingdom of heaven. And so when you go back to witness to those people that you've stomped on and hurt their feelings, they're not interested in what you have to say because you hurt their feelings. So you see how that kind of works, you know? You kind of got to treat, you know, the kingdom of God and seeking first His kingdom rather than doing what you think you should do. So that's why we should always pray before we say something. We should really pray before we do something. And before we act upon something, we should really consider how it affects people. Because it's very easy to have just one word, one action, or one deed just kind of blow people out of the water. Now, God will forgive you, obviously. You know, He's forgiven you because He knows all the sins you're going to commit. He knows all the sins that you have committed. And when He saved you, He said, Look, I got you covered. But there are consequences. And I know for myself, you know, I, I feel very saddened by some of the choices that I've made at times in my life that there's no there's no fixing or resolving it's just the way it is you know I'll suffer to the day I die with some things that cannot be changed because though God has made me new he doesn't take away like some people want to you know put well you know once you get saved you know everything's forgotten and forgiven well it will be forgotten because he will cast it into the sea of forgetfulness but until that day there are consequences we pay, and they sometimes come up and catch you by surprise. So don't be surprised if your life, you know, sometimes is one of undoing some of the luggage and baggage that you've carried around for years that you didn't realize that there were, you know, kind of conflicts that, you know, didn't get resolved. And that they will come up and hit you at times, right between the eyes, when you think you're doing so wonderful. And God doesn't say that you're not doing wonderful. What he does is that he says, I've forgiven you. And that's one thing that we need to always remember. Though we may fail at times, and though we may not be the perfect example of whatever it is that you know, you're doing in your life or your ministry or your job or whatever it may be, the surprises of circumstances should not take you unaware. Jesus said in the world, you shall have tribulation, guaranteed. If you think everything's going smooth right now, it will change, trust me. It will crash and burn at some point in time. So don't be you know, caught up into this idea that you're insulated somehow. You're not. Everyone goes through trials. You may not see someone else going through it, but they're going through it. So when they do, have a word for them. You know, have a good word. Because sometimes we never know what we're saying will have such a powerful impact on a person. Except for God says that a word aptly spoken is like apples of silver in pictures of gold. Now, that's a beautiful picture because, frankly, apples of silver in pictures of gold would be worth a lot of money right now. <laughs> and everybody likes money. Money, money. <laughs> well, maybe I sort of like money. You know, I kind of like some of the things I got. You know, money is just kind of like yeah, pain in the butt. You know, but you got to use it, so you might as well not abuse it. But the point being is that when you use your words correctly spoken and when you allow God to make them aptly a part of someone's life then they may retain that for the rest of their life inspired to turn to God in a way that you never thought you would have affected someone like that you are Jesus literally to someone else and so treat it seriously sometimes some of the words you say because you know that when Jesus speaks you listen and you may be surprised to find out that people around you, when you speak, they listen. Be careful. Be mindful. Be aware of that. In the multitude of words there wants not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. My beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that rules his spirit than he that takes a city. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. By thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned.
Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Jesus suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be weaned and fainted in your mind. In their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. You see, it is possible to be like Jesus, but when you seek to defend yourself, when you think that you have to stand up for your rights, when you think you have to assert yourself like the world tells you, and like especially in America, there's this whole idea of that, I've got to stand up for the Christian nation. I've got to stand up for the Christian right. I've got to stand up for conservatives. I've got to stand up. You don't have to stand up. You see, really, you have to sit down and shut up because God has it under control. The best thing that you could do, nine times out of ten, in any argument, in any debate, in any confrontation, sit down and shut up. Because if you let it go, guess what it does? It goes. Notice the word, let it go, because it will go its course. It's kind of like a river. Emotions sometimes are like that. They're going to go. They're going to follow the path of least resistance. But if you zip it the lip it, you know, and take a stand to remain silent, it can't go anywhere in you. It hits you, and just like a stone or rock, it splashes over you and goes beyond you. You are creating a literal tide pool behind you that protects those that are being washed along in the raging waters, as you've seen in a river, how sometimes how you see this Holy cow, look at the water running down. But then when it hits a solid rock, bam, it just flies over it and it goes around it. But it can't move it. it. tries to undercut it, but it can't move it. Because if that rock is on bedrock, it doesn't move. It stays there. And if it does, then guess what it does? All those that are behind that rock are protected. Because it's a still water. It's a backwater. The person is actually safe behind that spot that is blocking all that rushing current coming at them. And that's kind of what emotion does, is that it comes rushing at you, you know, and you, bam, you know, you could either be knocked over by it, or you could stop. Be found standing solid on the rock, Jesus himself. Be mindful of those things when he tells you to say nothing, to be still and know that he is God. Because the rock that stands in the center of a raging river of emotion that's coming at it or the raging circumstances of life stands out like a sore thumb. I mean, it is obvious. And when we look at those kinds of rocks, you know, when you're going mountain climbing or you go to some river or some place, you know, and you see in the ocean, like all the waves cast up and thrown back down, you're impressed with the rock itself. You're amazed. It stands out so obvious because it's not being pushed along. It's not being rolled down the river. It's not being crushed by the tide. It's not being devastated by the waves. It stands solid. And that's what you could do if you stand on the Word of God. You could be like that rock, and then others will admire it from a distance, maybe, or maybe be also another rock behind it, holding you up. So let your words be building something and not tearing down. Because Jesus said that his teachings, his statements would be like those that built their house upon a rock. That when the storms of life came, their, rock, their house stood because it was founded upon a rock. The foundation was sure. And that's what we have to make sure we do. Make sure you're kind of like, you know, life is built upon certain principles. Certain truths that Jesus said to do. One of them would be your words. Be careful of your words. Be mindful of them. That you don't have to defend yourself. You have to contend with not the other person, but with your own personal reactions and actions. The battle is not out there. The battle is in here. And if you win the battle in your heart, and you control your lips, so to speak, and you stop your tongue from wagging, 
And you will have found that all of your ways will begin to prosper in what you do. God will grow it up like a field for harvest as opposed to a little plot that maybe you kind of constructed for yourself and you're poisoning with your own words, your mouth, your actions, and your deeds. God would have you to help someone today. He would have you to bless someone today. He would have you to encourage someone today because that's what he does. He says, this is the day I have made. I will rejoice over you with love because you have rejoiced over me with singing and you have decided to choose to follow me in rejoicing over the day that I have made. So follow God in the way that he wants to go and you'll be able to encourage others in what they're going through because they may not be the rock and they may be needing someone because they're being rushed along like a flood by circumstance or emotion and they need someone to help them in their time of need. You are, and you may be today, Jesus to someone else.